Hello everyone, in this video I have done something a little bit differently. You're going to have the opportunity to tune in and listen to my conversation about the documentary persona that was aired on HBO Max recently with Mukun Tragavan and Javad Saif. The documentary persona uh, portrays an abusement of corporate America uh, in using personality typing for giving people jobs or not. Uh, Mukund is a PhD of industrial and organizational psychology from uh, University of South Florida. And of course, his perspective on, um, you know, the rigorous personality typing that can actually be beneficial for, um, you know, hiring decisions, it's very interesting to hear. Javad is an assistant professor in California Polytechnic State University in Pomona, and his major is industrial engineering. But I don't know anyone uh, like him who knows a lot about personality typing, specifically MBTI personality. And him and I engage in many hours of conversation about personality typing. Of course, humbly, I also uh, bring in my perspective of um, you know, machine learning fairness, something that I have engaged in research and uh, discussion in the past couple of years. You don't want to miss this amazing conversation. Um, stay with me and let's enjoy this conversation. Today. conversation I think it's an amazing thing that we all have found this time together because we bring different perspective to this conversation so uh, I think it's better for us to start with you know the, the unique perspective each of us have for this conversation that we're going to talk about this documentary uh, persona I watched it on HBO Max and I'm going to go ahead and like, give you my perspective and then I ask you guys to share yours. Uh, the way it's, it you know, stood out to me and um, you know, I understood the best is that aspect of using uh, personality type as a way to use for data-driven decision-making. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's basically a model with a set of assumptions. And when we use that without having taken um, the right, um, you know, the right way of uh, making sure that we are making these assumptions for the decision. There are a lot of things that can go wrong. And, um, you know, that's within my teaching and my research. I have done uh, research as far as uh, machine learning fairness and the assumptions that I believe leads to those fairness concerns. And also at the same time, I regularly have data ethics conversation in my classes. Um, so that's where I am seeing the significance of uh, this conversation and this documentary. So let me ask Javad to go next and introduce his own perspective. I, I recently watched the uh, documentary and uh, I, I, like, I liked it for the most part, but I think, um, I think they didn't, uh, they were, the people talking about uh, personality typing systems were not very well aware, or the people who made the movie were not very well aware of what these systems are. And of, obviously they're, they're showing uh, one of the misuses, misuses of the system, uh, which is true. And uh, I agree with it, but they stop right there. They don't uh, say what, why, uh, what can be done to make them better. And um, because of just, uh, no, I'm not saying that that incident, I'm not trying to minimize the significance of that incident in the movie, uh, but um, it's more complicated than that. They can't just throw out an entire uh, branch of research, uh, which is very important. Uh, just because uh, something happened. That's uh, my perspective, in short. Uh, and can you, before we move to Mukund, can you add you know, your experience and your background 
that uh, has uh, has you any disrespect about this topic? How I got familiar with personality? Yeah, you know, I mean, like you know, I know that you, you know, I mean, like I know you personally. Uh huh. Okay. Think about personality. So know, the personality types are not uh, are just mainly an interest of mine, a personal interest, basically. It's not. Uh, I mean, it, it, it helps me in my profession. I'm a, a college professor in engineering. Um, it helps me in many ways indirectly, uh, but it's not my profession. I haven't done academic research in it, but I've read a lot about it since maybe um, seven years ago now. I've been reading passionately, trying to understand how they work, how many systems are out there and What's the use of what's what's a good use of them? How can I use them to make my life easier? How can I use them to understand other people or help other people? I have misused it myself many times in this journey, um, and I can see how others can misuse it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think it's a very useful tool in general. But I also think that because it's very complex and conceptual. Uh, it can be easily misused, misused and misinterpreted. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, so let's go to Mukund. Um, can you give us an introduction on how this topic pertains to you and your background? Sure. So I had a similar reaction to Javad um, when I watched the documentary. I'm a, I'm a uh, industrial organizational psychology PhD student. I do most of my research is on personality testing and personality assessments in the workplace. Um, I watched this movie because it created a lot of buzz within the IO psychology community, and most of it was negative publicity. Um, and, you know, when I watched it, it was really painful to watch. It was felt a lot like a, an incredibly biased propaganda or like opinion piece fueled by emotion and not really... Uh, on reaching any kind of consensus or solution towards um, how personality assessments or algorithms should be used in the workplace. It was kind of more like, oh, here, all these things are bad and they're so bad that we should just throw them out, not even consider them. Uh, I felt like, um, you know, the, the movie itself was just furthering an agenda that the, the, the creators obviously had and it wasn't really out there to critique in a productive way, if that makes sense. Uh, doesn't really present any like well-researched well critique on personality, but at the same time, it brought up a lot of very important concerns about justice and fairness in the use of algorithms and um, objective assessment in the, in the workplace. You know, um, some of the stuff that I totally disagreed with was how they equated MBTI to personality assessment. And MBTI is something that's not really used in any verified employment testing or should not be used. Um, you know, and they also um, made a lot of assumptions about different things that aren't really as they are. Um, but they did bring up important points about disability awareness and about fairness and about using diverse data sources to develop these algorithms. Um, but yeah, I, I was disappointed because I was really looking forward to the movie. Uh, it was one of the most publicly, uh, or most public exposés of personality assessment. I thought, okay, that's going to be a really insightful watch with good critique from both sides, but unfortunately it wasn't like that decades and decades of rigorous scientific research in personality was just totally ignored. Um, you know, all the efforts of the academic community from especially a lot of minority researchers who very recently have been working on improving this justice aspect of uh, personality assessment was just not even considered um, and applied personality research that is happening all over the world in many different companies. It was just totally ignored both the good and bad aspects of that. Um, you know, so why this incredibly valuable, I think, to have the sort of consumer input that the uh, uh, documentary was fe was featuring. Uh, there just wasn't a fair representation of the population of all the folks that are involved in personality assessment. You know, it was very one-sided and it was very, very much propaganda based. Like I don't, I still don't know. I watched the movie twice now. I still don't understand what the point was. Was it just to 
create fear was it to say, hey, look what these employers are doing. Be scared. Don't apply to jobs because they're all going to cheat you and steal your data. That's actually a good question. Uh, Javar, did you feel like you understood what was the main message of the documentary? Uh, they, they were trying to raise awareness about something that is wrong and it's going on. Uh, I think that was their main, main objective. And uh, um one comment on that is I, I think they did a good job ma making personality systems, especially MBTI, look bad enough uh, and highlighting this main disadvantage of it. Uh, but another thing that I didn't um, like about the movie is that they were assuming that every job you apply to, they take a personality test uh, for, for like uh, applic from the applicants. But from my ex my own experience applying for jobs and after watching the movie, I became curious. I talked to a friend who has recently applied to hundreds of jobs and other people who are currently ap applying, other friends. Um, but just these are just samples, right? Personal samples. Uh, I realized that not many companies actually do that. Uh, at least the ones that... Uh, in, in, in our field, the field of engineering, PhD level research, uh, or graduate level, maybe for uh, other positions, maybe that's true. Um, but again, I think everything was too too exaggerated. I think right. I agree. It was very much focused on the extremes. How much? How much this uh, this misuse exists? Or uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the ways that you know, the personality type is unfortunately is being used is to narrow down a pool of applicants that they don't know how to narrow it down in other ways. Why, why do you say unfortunately? Um, so, I mean, like, the, the reason is it, it, it could be, it could be wrong assumptions. Um, so if it's applied in the, in the way that it's following, you know, rigorous, um, way of doing that, it could be good. I mean, when I am sitting at the, you know, the committee for uh, accepting graduate students, um, these are the things that I've done. I see sometimes they just use these heuristics such as um, their GPA should be higher than 3.3, right? And that could exclude someone who has happened to have a low GPA and um, just, just exclude them. But you know, they have other things to show for it. I mean, I didn't have a good GPA coming from my uh, undergrad and I consider myself worthy of graduate studies. So, right. so, so, so yeah. let, me, let me finish my point. I'll come back to you. So um, that, that aspect of uh, you know, using that, I mean, I'm just talking about Javad's points that he says he hasn't seen among his friends who, you know, you know that actually goes through this. I think the reason is that we, our circle is more on the uh, you know, professionals with PhDs that there are not many applications or applicants in that for that job. Yeah. But you know, if a service industry wants to uh, hire, they are looking to cut down on um, you know, the amount of things they need, they need to do to get to a shortlist. So that's the problem. You know, they look at this as a way to um, capitalize on this way of narrowing down the list of applicants to save costs. And that is, that is my own objection, that that should be done more responsibly. I'm not saying throw out the personality type a way of doing this. I'm saying this should need, needs need to be done more responsibly. Mukun, you have a point. No, that's a completely fair assessment. I think you're making a pretty valid point in that, you know, a lot of people use heuristics because it's easier to do that mm -hmm. than to, you know, look at every single piece of data or it's easier to use intuition and say, I have a good feeling about this person that I had interview with. But those methods are time and again shown to be inappropriate and much less effective than mechanical combination of, of measures, you know, like GPA, and yeah, SAT tests and even personality assessments, you know. 
And when companies, when IO psychologists design these kind of assessments, they do it in compliance with the EEOC and in compliance with Americans with Disability Act and stuff. But there are a lot of managers and a lot of companies out there using them inappropriately, like using the MBTI for assessment when they, you know, shouldn't at all. Um, Look, because they're not me. valid predictors of job relevant outcomes. Oh, here, here she is. Uh, what was, yeah, what was the my cat? cat. <laughs> <laughs> question. Is there such a regulation? I mean, since this is your field of study and field of education, is there such a regulation or guidelines as how is the responsible way and the right way of using personality type? Um, so in terms of legal regulations, there aren't none. There should be, but there aren't. But in terms of uh, academic re uh, recommendations, there are several, several, several papers on uh, what how personality tests should be used appropriately, how personality tests can help reduce the kind of discrimination that they're talking about, um, what kind of personality measures should be used for what kind of jobs, how personality measures are predictors of job relevant outcomes. I mean, like people wouldn't use personality assessment in a workplace if it wasn't predicting something that was useful to them, right? One of the reasons that personality tests are used to weed out participants uh, or uh, applicants is because they're not good fits and you wouldn't want to do a job where you're not capable of it. You know, you don't have the competency. Um, you're not gonna feel like you're a good fit and you're not gonna get along with other people. You're gonna be miserable there your job satisfaction is going to be low and your job productivity is going to be low, which means the company is going to suffer. So it's, it's in the interest of both parties, more so on the employer because they're obviously paying that person. They're going to be the ones that are losing the money if that worker comes out to be inefficient or not uh, productive, right? It's going to be a loss for the company. So obviously they have more of a vested interest in weeding out um, and being highly selective. Uh, but at the same time, you know, these kind of measures are validated before they're used and are just thrown out and said, hey, here's some questions, answer it. And then you're like, oh, you don't like parties? I don't want you in my job. No, they have valid predict, they are valid, they have valid correlations with important job and life outcomes. Yeah. Which yeah, is something I, that the documentary didn't discuss because they focus solely on that. MBTI. I completely get that. Let me, I mean, we are starting to talk about the need for Can I add something? regulation. Mm -hmm. um, go ahead, go ahead. Please, Joan. This, this problem, uh, that has been created using personality systems and heuristics is a symptom of another problem. Uh, and that other problem is that not all jobs uh, are equally respected in the society uh, from a social status standpoint and from a financial standpoint in terms of like salary. And that motivates people to and uh, not go uh, not go after jobs that are well suited for their personality mm -hmm. and they try to um, um, try to find ways uh, find ways to do jobs that are more acceptable and when they get rejected uh, they blame the person they blame this way of a screening right right well, I mean, so right now, I mean, I, I, that's a valid point too. And I think uh, some part of the problem comes from there. Um, uh, I think I wanted to stay with what McCombs were saying a little bit, then we can come back to this uh, misperception of people wanting to um, you know, just get the job with more prestige and perhaps they are upset when they are said. Better salary. Okay you are better suited for something else. Uh, but I wanted to ask your opinion, Javad, about um, the need for regulation. I mean, we just heard from a company, I didn't know, there are a lot of guidelines and you know, codes, how you should be using these personality types, uh, but these are not uh, being applied when a company that is not really interested in doing this the right way, the only thing that they're interested is to save money, to cut their costs. Do you think, um, you know, from your perspective, um, a, you know, a, re a regulation or a mediation from the government could solve the situation? Uh, I think, yes. I think, uh, um, I mean, again, it's, I think this is just a symptom. Uh, we will have it's like a, a machine that doesn't work properly. If you fix something, something else will break. 
you don't know what is going to break, but something else is going to break. Uh, so I think, but I think the regulation is already there. Like you cannot um, employ people based on their religion, their sex, mm -hmm. gender. And this is just another class of, uh, this is another classification that should be added to that list. Based on their age, you cannot hire people or um, decide not to hire people because of their age, their gender, and so forth, right? This is just a new one, a new class. Do you think personality should be one of those that we shouldn't discriminate people based on? I think so, yeah. Why? Why do you say that? Because, uh, because you're putting a cap on what an individual can do. Uh, you're saying that if you are this personality, you're not capable of doing this job and you're just uh, how, making how, it possible for them. However, there could be a person that has done, uh, has, has worked on themselves, has developed new uh, abilities uh, that cannot be measured uh, by that personality system and they may be placed in another personality system and that personality system in its definition, that, that personality type and that type in its definition is not capable of doing this job while they have developed the skill to do that job. Yeah. Uh, you, you bring up two really important considerations there. And I think both of them are really worth spending some time on. One is that you said that somebody might have learned new skills and abilities that would help them in that job, but they don't get hired because of their personality um, yeah. assessment. And second one you talked about is that people get put into these personality type boxes, mm -hmm. uh, which say that, okay, if you're in this box with one of 16 boxes, then you don't get into this job, right? Yeah. But one, one assumption that this documentary made was that uh, personality tests decide whether or not you get the job. But in essence, in, in, in truth, the personality test is just one of the tools in the toolbox, right? And you have to use that tool appropriately. You can't use a screwdriver to hammer an alien. Right. Uh, at the same way, you know, personality tests are just one of the different tools that people use to assess whether a candidate is, is, is good for a job or not. In the same way, an interview is used. You know, you can use a totally unstructured interview and just ask questions like, if you were any potato, what potato would you be? That has no relevance to the job, but you can ask it, right? And that would be an inappropriate way of doing interviews. Yeah, That's you can interview. ask it. I'm not again, like if you have any apply to jobs, you do say what's your gender, what's your like age. Right, right? yeah. They can ask that. Yeah, and so like if right. you have a structured interview, that's a more valid way of assessing those uh, candidate in an interview. At the same way, a personality test, if you use a well-validated measure that shows that these personality traits are highly correlated with job relevant outcomes, like, okay, you're applying for a job where high consciousness predicts, you know, your job ability, uh, then you would want to select people who represent that high conscientiousness bracket, right? At the same time, if you say that, okay, only INFJs can do this job, then you're totally reducing what personality is. You know, the whole concept of MBTI reduces personality into 16 discrete categories instead yeah, that, of that's representing another the entire thing. continuum. Say personality system, personality type, which one are you talking about? because these are fundamentally different. And uh, right. if you're talking about MBTI, maybe your point is valid in some cases. If you're talking about big five, maybe not. Enneagram, like these are all different systems. And right, right. And that's something this documentary totally did not totally consider. Different. Like big five is, big five is very uh, well researched and uh, there are like a statistical results behind all the claims in it. Uh, MBTI, on the other hand, a lot of things in it are speculations or come from experience of the practitioners. Um, so this system, that's another comment on the movie that which one are you talking about? Like which personality system and which way of testing are you talking about? For example, uh, answering a multiple choice question uh, may not be very effective. Maybe uh, another company uses a better uh, more effective, more fair method. Um, so these are this is this is this is too general what they did in that movie. Right. Yeah. That's why I say it means it seems that they haven't done 
their research. Yeah, I think one one of the biggest takeaways for me from that movie was that they found personality assessment and algorithms and then turned it into an entity that people can blame. Oh, that algorithm uh, made this hiring decision that cost me mm -hmm. my job. Really or that personality test made this hiring. But it's not the algorithms that are making decisions. It's people. It's people making those decisions. It's people creating these algorithms and these assessments. Well, yeah, yeah, we should be are, holding those people support. accountable. Yeah. But, sorry? Those algorithms are decision support systems. They're not decision Right, yeah. Exactly. And we should be holding those people accountable that are making these decisions and that are creating these algorithms and that are using biased data sources, right? We know all about how data sources are come from uh, weird societies, Western, educated, industrialized, uh, uh, I forgot what R is, and democratic. Uh, and, and that most of those are educated white men, uh, educated cisgender, uh, straight white men, right? Uh, and that completely reduces the entire continuum of humans in the world. Uh, but we don't really talk about that as much as, oh, look at this algorithm, it did such a bad thing. We personify these machines, these tools that we've created as a scapegoat instead of holding those accountable that are actually creating these problems. Mm. Well, let me use uh, an analogy here that sort of like gets us to talk a little bit about also what we did like about uh, this documentary. Um, so, I mean, let's imagine a world that does not have cars, right? So a car, which is a tool, um, comes to be, to be used by people. And now we are living in a world that everyone uses a using car, but we have to get license for it. We have to be educated for it. And there is a system in which we are uh, enforced to make sure that we are abiding by those laws. So I think what I liked about this documentary was that it's showing us this unregulated space of using this powerful tool because I think it's powerful tool. There are two powerful tools, personality typing, algorithmic decision making. These are two very powerful tools that this documentary is talking about. And I think this documentary did a good job of um, maybe portraying um, what could happen if these spaces if these stay these space remain unregulated, right? Right. So this is what I like about this uh, documentary. It talks about this need for us to um, you know be able to think about and imagine a future that. We can use these very powerful tools in a more uh, respectful and reasonable way. And I think um, the need for a reasonable um, governing agency to come in, use the, um, you know, the right expertise, the scientific expertise, I mean, perhaps uh, who is better than the community of industrial and organizational psychology to come in and start creating those regulations. So I think, and what I like about the documentary is sort of like show this need that we need them. And I think um, they could have done a better job because uh, from the looks of it, um, you know, it seems that uh, the many years of research and efforts to provide this tool, um, you know, on both sides, algorithmic decision-making and also personality typing, it's, it's a heritage, it's an intellectual heritage, um, is being thrown under the bus. Um, right. It feels like that. Um, if we move past that, we could see the merits of this documentary showing this need because now a senator, now a Congress person can watch this documentary and say, okay, there is a need. For this yeah, right. sure absolutely so if i ask you mukun if there was something that you liked about this documentary what could that be i think i think it made a lot of really good points about the kinds of stuff that you're talking about you know justice and fairness issues with algorithmic decision making and with uh, personality assessment uh, they talk a lot about you know disability awareness and promoting this diversity of data used to develop these kind of assessments. And those are concerns that we need to be talking about. 
Um, that last scene where they all are like talking with the senators and stuff, I don't really understand what was the conclusion there, but that we need more of that. We need more of, you know, people, both the consumers uh, or all three consumers, the um, employers and academic researchers to come together and say, hey, these are the issues that we're all concerned about. And we need to take, you know, more serious action and create like regulations and legislation that will ensure that, you know, practices are fair and equitable throughout, not just reserved for big companies that can afford it um, or that are aware of it because they employ IO psychologists. You know, smaller companies probably don't even know what IO psychology is or probably don't care because, you know, it's beyond um, their needs at that point. And a lot of, you know, people from the, uh, from, you know, lay people don't really want to engage at this level because it's beyond what they need and beyond their motivations at this point. And it's yeah. not, it's not fair on us to hold them uh, subject the same kind of treatment that we're uh, asking um, people with expertise, you know, IO psychologists to do. Uh, I think one of the things that this documentary really sh shone a light on is that as a community, personality researchers have not done a good job of communicating um, the merits of their research and the merits of, um, of, of fair and equitable assessment in workplaces, which is being done continuously. But there's still this Apparently, evidently, there's this perception that um, these kind of assessments are just immoral and evil completely. Yeah. And we need to change that. We have the awareness now. Absolutely. So I think that was also something that I noticed that this documentary, not but intentionally, showed uh, the fact that you know the scientific community who is you know working on this area um, had left this space completely uh, unused, this space of, you know, someone coming and get, uh, grabbing people's attention and telling them, hey, this is a personality type and this is how it can be used responsibly. Because I haven't seen anything other than this documentary that is on the, um, you know, mainstream media that talks about these kind of things. So I think that was an unintentional uh, benefit from this uh, personality, from this documentary. Javad, let me ask you a question. Um, I do know that you use MBTI, uh, personality type a lot. And one of the major parts of this documentary was to sort of attack MBTI and then say, okay, MBTI is basically crap. Then all personality types are crap. So were you disappointed by that? Um, yes, because... Uh... MBTI is a tool that can be used, can be put into good use, and it has can have a lot of good advantages. Um, however, let me let me correct myself. Uh, I don't personally like MBTI. I like uh, Jung's theorems, uh, and I like his book, and uh, I don't like the MBTI version of how Jung's uh, theories have been uh, interpreted and put into use. Um, it's a good introduction to personality types, uh, but I'm not a big fan of it. <clears throat> so whenever, for example, I, I refer to a type as uh, INTJ or ENTJ or whatever, uh, that's, just, uh, th that's just more common. That's why I use it. But my point of uh, reference is not usually the documents that uh, Mars Briggs company have uh, produced. I go back to the original theories usually to, to use the system or other theories by, uh, by other people. Um, can, you you give a, can you give us a short distinction between the Jung theory and MBTI? So uh, as you saw in the movie, um, the creators of the uh, Mars Briggs read the theories and uh, basically commercialized it, right? right. Uh, ma made an assessment uh, tool to use that to uh, put people in boxes, as the movie says, uh, as the movie implies. But there are many, many other authors, other researchers who have uh, read the theories and have uh, uh, develop their own their own versions of their own 
interpretations of Jung's uh, theories. And uh, collectively, all of them, unfortunately, are, call, are called MBTI. But MBTI is just one commercialized interpretation of Jung's theories. And there are many, many out there. And some of them, and the validity of them hasn't been tested. Uh, mm -hmm. It's up to the reader to, to decide if they're valid or not. Uh, if they're, uh, it's, it's just a sea of theories and, and, and articles that you have to read and eventually decide yourself which ones make sense, which ones are useful, and then uh, use them. So, and at this point, I forgot what your question was. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you answered it. I asked if you were disappointed that MBTI was attacked, and he said- No, I was actually very happy. Honestly, I liked this documentary a lot because there were a lot of things I was frustrated about in the uh, typing communities that exist online, forums, Twitter, YouTube, that I really, they really frustrate me when I watch them. Uh, there are a lot of YouTubers that uh, create uh, type-related videos and they just add to the non-scientific uh, and not well-researched theories in the, in the field. And uh, they just abuse it. So I think they shed light on all of those I like that a lot, actually. And uh, what I didn't like was that they just stopped there. They didn't develop further to say they, there are a lot of people who are doing valid research in this, legit research in this area. And uh, the findings of those should be researched and uh, we should ask those people what, what's a good solution. Um, Mukun, let me ask you this question. Uh, how would you improve this documentary if it were down to you? quite a few things that I think I can touch on but one of the main things I noticed was there's just so many assumptions that were made right um, they assumed that personality test is the only way people are assessed and chosen for a job they assumed that MBTI that is was the only implicit. that was an implicit assumption you're right right yeah and, it, and then they made an assumption they very blatantly made the assumption that MBTI is the only personality type they showed the big five uh, somewhat peripherally, and then they just kept moving on. Uh, it was like, oh, look, there's this thing. We don't need to talk about it. And just they, 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 they did it so artistically. They said Big Five and MBTI are the Coke and Pepsi of personality typing. And then they didn't talk about Big Five at all. They right, and they, did, they didn't talk about what Coke and Pepsi means, how different Coke and Pepsi are. Uh, Maybe which they're hired by I... Pepsi. Sorry? Maybe the, the documentary was sponsored by Pepsi. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, who knows, man? Yeah, it's a very good point. I was really surprised that CNN would make this documentary. It was just very, like, poorly researched, uh, but maybe intentionally poorly researched, you know? Um, I think we should, the, the first thing I would start with is balance. We know we're not going to get anywhere from saying you're a fool, either both sides, right? We need to have more of these kinds of productive conversations and work together as a group to come up with solutions. What was the solution in their documentary? There's nothing c concrete given. They had some like arguments with senators and that was about it, right? They didn't really show what was the conclusion of that scenario. And they um, kind there of assume. Were there anyone you would consider from the community of industrial and organizational psychology in the uh, documentary? So many people, so many people. There is an entire industry were of psychometricians. Were in the documentary? Oh, there was there was one IO psychologist who works for Higher View. Higher View is a company that's working on novel assessments, like Javad was saying. Like instead of just multiple choice, they're looking at eye tracking and facial recognition and game based assessments, uh, which are all going to be the future scapegoats for similar conversations and similar attacks against this kind of research because they're being publicized in this negative way that oh, we're just collecting data so that we can do something evil, not collecting data so we can improve our own machines and create uh, fairer and more just tools, right? So I, I think the best way to improve this documentary would be to start with balance um, and also look at the designers of these assessments and these algorithms that are supposedly uh, discriminatory. Who is designing them? Why are they designing them this way? And why are we not holding those folks accountable? Um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's that. 
at the same time, the general public, I don't think they have the motivation to engage at this level. So it's not, the responsibility is not on them. Uh, like Javad was saying, it's not, it's not, the responsibility isn't on readers to find out which kind of personality assessment is the best. It should be on those who are designing these assessments to say, hey, this one has the most validity for these reasons, and here's why we support this one, right? It shouldn't be like, uh, oh, here are all these different academic papers. You can all go read them. Nobody's actually going to read all of them. Uh, there are so many meta-analyses looking at uh, the predictive validity of MBTI and Big Five, uh, but it doesn't reach the general public because they're just not, they don't have the motivation to engage at this level. And they shouldn't. Why should they? They're not, this is not their bread and butter, right? This is not um, something that would naturally reach the lay person. Uh, but I'm glad that this documentary has been able to do that. And I'm hoping for more productive conversations just like this. Um, and hopefully a sequel to this documentary would have, would present the other side as along with these concerns. Absolutely. Can I add a, a, a quick comment? And that's, uh, in this movie, uh, they're assuming that before personality tests, uh, um, become uh, become like popular and companies that start using them anyone just could get any job but that's not the right. case they <laughs> have always interviewed people to find out about their personalities and they had this three months probably uh, three months testing period where you would go to a job so they can watch you and understand your personality to see if you're a good fit uh and then hire you. They did that already. They always did that. This, these tools are just a, a faster way of doing the same thing. It's just Absolutely. to facilitate the interview process. But That's, a, that's a very good point. But let me use this space to add on this because this is from the algorithmic side. Uh, you know, the question of bias being in our decision-making, you know, whenever we make a decision as humans, is valid. I mean, we've had always bias, right? You know, even before we were in the interview, we would make decisions based on our biases. And one of the things that we have to pay attention when we talk about algorithm decision making is that when we have a biased algorithm for, for many, for any reason, could be the personality type behind it is not well, very well researched, or the programmer who turned the sort of like algorithm into action, you know, brings their own biases to it, the bias will be applied to a large number of people all at once. So the same way that an algorithmic decision-making could facilitate a good decision for a lot of people, it could also facilitate to bring bias to more people. And that's why it's sort of like at this intersection because we have this personality typing that you know, a lot of people are misusing, and then we have these algorithmic decision making that also a lot of other people are using. It has created a much more problematic problem. So both of these are powerful again, uh, but needs a more responsible way of using them. So that's important. And I think if I were to improve, let me answer that question myself. If I were to improve this documentary, I would point out to do to these two. Uh, very powerful tools and talk about how you know the good usage of these two powerful tools could make lives better and right. that, you know, abusing them could also make a lot of people richer at the expense of a lot of other people so it's it's right it's really that uh, distinction that we're missing in this documentary yeah i agree so let me ask one question from Makun. Makun, um, with Big Five that you're saying it's very well researched, um, aren't the community of industrial and organizational psychology uh, worried about a future in which, I mean, the person, the documentary also somehow featured this too, that there comes a, you know, sort of a training to what to fool these algorithms or to what to fool these questioners. And uh, um, if there is such concern, how, um, you know, what's the best way to go about this? 
So I think one of my favorite scenes in that whole documentary was that coaching program where that guy was saying, hey, if you get a question like, um, you know, personality thing, if you get a question like, uh, have you lied in the past five years? He was just like, you wouldn't want to put no, because obviously that's going to be a lie in itself. You know, it's uh, hypocritical. And I think those kind of coaching programs are excellent. I don't know why we shouldn't have them. I don't have anything against those. Uh, they're not really tricking the algorithm. He's not saying you should lie to uh, the, on the personality assessment. He's saying you should put your best foot forward. You should uh, respond to those like you would in an interview. And I, that's fair advice. Um, there's like a pretty good bulk, uh, pretty good literature on faking versus impression management in assessments. Uh, and it's the general consensus is that faking isn't really an issue because what when what people do when they're faking is they're managing their impressions, right? And that's a pretty important consideration for, for jobs. If you're in a job, you would want to manage your impression in a way that is putting your best foot forward. You know, you don't want somebody who's deliberately going to be saying uh, things that are against I about this, but it's the social okay. norm. What, what do you have to add to it? What? What do you have to add? No, this wasn't, uh, I didn't know that this has been researched and uh, uh, I wasn't, I didn't know that the makers of this test already know that um, they only care about the right answer, whether it's genuine or fake. That, that's it, there mean. isn't exactly a right answer because one of the things that that coaching person did, he looked at each individual question. And most usually you don't really look at each individual question unless that question is put there to find people who are like responding carelessly. You know, you might have a question that says, please answer, agree to this item. And if somebody's just clicking through and not really paying attention and they don't hit agree, then you would say, okay, that item I need to pay attention to. But usually you get an aggregate of items that assess a particular trait within an entire personality inventory. So if you're looking at the big five, for example, uh, and you have an item like, I like to go to parties, that's an item that assesses extraversion within big five. And you would see all the different 10 items, for example, that assess extraversion together instead of looking at each individual question within that personality test. Let me point out to a possible um, you know, gap and you know, possible justice gap here. So for example, every time, I do take one of these tests, um, you know, in a way, in, in a system that they are trying to evaluate me, since I know a lot about these tests, I kind of feel privileged that I do know what they're asking me and I do know how to give them the right answer. So um, is this going to be a question of, you know, it's sort of creating a gap uh, between the people who are in the know and the people who are not in the know? Or is this a way of educating people to really know what is a good way of behaving for, um, you know, certain jobs so they can, I don't know, work on themselves to give the right impression and also um, answer the questions in a way that they, they need to be answered. So do we want to look at it as a way to include people or exclude people? Because we can look at it from both perspectives. That's an awesome question. And I think that's an incredible, empirical question that we need more research on. Um, yeah, I'm down to do that research if you all are interested. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's more a thought at this point because, you know, these personality type could be use, I mean, if, if, I, if I really want to work at a company and the only, you know, the only uh, barrier between me and that company is this personality type, and if I can go and study about it and see what they are looking for, for that type of job, I could even, I mean, because we know that personality type is uh, somewhat rigid, but can also be changed by you know, intentional practices. Is that, is that a correct assessment? Is that a correct statement, Mukun? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Uh, maybe but not all traits, but definitely does. Intentional practices, you could be more conscientious, right? Um, so that in itself could be uh, looked at as a way to um, give people opportunity to do what they really want to, because they know that this is, this is what this job requires. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Completely agree. That's why I think those kind of coaching programs are great. They help alleviate these sort of classist issues where there are some people who are in the know and some people who are not. Um, you know, as people who come from wealthier backgrounds might just by the virtue of being who they are and having the exposure that they've had might already be aware of these kinds of things from their parents and from other people they're exposed to, whereas other people who don't have that kind of exposure might not be aware. So this kind of coaching program would be excellent for them. Uh, thank you for that. I do have one last question. I think Jawad wanted to add something to your agreement. No, no, ask a question. I'll talk about it later. Um, you want to you go ahead because I want to ask this from Kunt again. Go ahead. Give us your point. <laughs> you don't have any questions for me? <laughs> <laughs> this is a challenging question. <laughs> Please include me. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, so I just wanted to say um we may uh we may encounter a type three error here which is uh answering the wrong the wrong question i think uh i think back to my point in the beginning uh if if the supply and demand of jobs and applicants is not the way it is right now Event, if, if it's if it's if we have a good balance of uh, supply and demand in the job market it will be the job applicants who will ask for personality tests it's like when you want to date someone you want to see if they're a good fit you, you want to see if you want to commit to this person uh, and if, whether it works right, right. you want to see if you, you, you don't have you, you don't you don't worry about getting a job so because of that, you go do research to see which, which job suits you. So it just starts from the applicant, not from the employer. You see what I mean? So the solution yeah. uh, is uh, getting to a point where uh, companies do not have to receive so many applicants, so many applications, and, have, and then they have to resort to all these algorithms because they can't like, read all of them all single one and interview all of them and give them equal chance they'll, be, they'll go out of business yeah. uh, the right solution is to create to work on the supply and demand to work on the balance between applicants and jobs in the, on the job market as a whole uh, so that this symptom goes away and uh, applicants start doing research on themselves to see what's the best job for them what's the best thing mm -hmm. they want um i think that's that's very powerful i totally agree yeah. uh if i paraphrase uh, what you said to tell me if i understood you right you're basically suggesting instead of the government um regulating this space the government should empower individual to go and do their own research about themselves and about what type of personality they have and what type of personality they like to have for, for each job. So they can um, you know, find the job easier and it shouldn't be down on the employers to assess uh, who's the right personality. It should be down on the applicant to find the job that is right for them. Uh, yeah, I think the, the job market should be regulated in a way that salaries are fair Job status is not the way it is right now. People don't look down at you because of your because you have a certain job, uh, or people don't get motivated to get a job just because it has a good social status. Uh, if if they regulate the job market as a whole, uh, culturally and financially, that way you balance the job market and then. Um, you won't have so many applicants for certain jobs and you won't have so many people looking for jobs. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, I like that. And that might be a good idea for doing your research, a compre comparison analysis between a capitalist country and a socialist country to see if these concerns are the same in those countries. I mean, I would imagine that in a socialist country, they don't have as much problem with this supply and demand in their job uh, because per perhaps that's more regulated the way you just said. Mm -hmm. But again, powerful, powerful message. 
thank you. I hadn't thought about that. This, you know, you just, that was, that was so powerful. I do have one last question for Mukund. This is going to be a little bit challenging. Uh, Mukund, uh, so you and I have been sort of offline having this conversation and you sent me the you know, official statement from the uh, you know, industrial organizational psychology. Uh, I couldn't sort of like uh, see, I couldn't stop noticing that there is a sort of like a crisis of identity for industrial and organizational psychology community. And I could, I mean, when I think about it, this is a very, um, you know, new field of study. So I could attribute that um, sort of crisis of identity to that, the fact that it, it's just making its way to become a more useful area for the society. Um, other than that, what could you say that, I mean, do you, do, you, do you see the same way that there is a crisis of identity because of this documentary? And what other things do you attribute that to? Yeah, absolutely. I think psychology, psychology research as a whole is going through this, going through a bunch of different crises, you know, crisis of identity, the replicability crisis, all kinds of different issues that um, perhaps past researchers didn't think as intentionally about are now being brought to the forefront. Um, and this, this documentaries like this and other exposés are useful for us to, you know, for self-reckoning to say, oh, hey, these are the areas where we're lacking and need to pull up our boots and, and get to work, you know. Um, personally, our IO research has been going on since, you know, early 1900s and has had several different resurgences over, the, over those years. And right now, I think we're going through another kind of resurgence where we have so many different fields. We have like traditional personality assessment, and we have all of these novel uh, assessments within just personality, but IO psychology has evolved to become such a huge, huge, huge field. You know, we're tackling things like hiring and selection to pregnancy in the workplace, to work-life balance, to mindfulness and how that improves worker productivity and other important life and job work outcomes, right? Um, and there's definitely some kind of crisis going on, reckoning, you know, are we uh, industrial psychology? Are we organizational psychology? Should we even call ourselves by those giant words? Should we limit ourselves to work psychology like they do in Europe? Or is there a totally, or should we be splitting up into multiple different branches of research that focus on these very large and individually discre discrete things? Um, I think there's a lot of work to do. And there's a lot of self-reflecting to do for the I.O. community. Thanks for answering that question. Let me ask one last question. I know I said that's going to be last, but I'm going to uh, also include Javad. Uh, so uh, let's, you know, I'm going to answer it too. I'm going to answer it in the last, you know, if, if, if you don't mind. Uh, what do you see the future of personality in, you know, in your area, um, the personality typing? Javad, you can go. The future of personality types in general. Yeah. Uh, I think um, it personality types are the new will become uh, the new religion, and just like any other religion, there will be people who abuse them. There will be people who use it for power and controlling other people. And yeah. there will be individuals who get the right message of them. They do their own research. They learn it deeply and they use it to their advantage. And uh, after a while, I think um, uh, they will be uh, used in a good way to help people understand themselves, use it as a map to see where they are in which a state of mind they are and to do better self-management. I think gradually this main use of uh, personality systems uh, will uh, conquer the, the business or the industry um, and the research field where uh, it is used as a tool to uh, help individuals manage themselves. Excellent. Mukund, what do you think? Yeah, I, I kind of want to go back to uh, something Javad said earlier. He used this terminology of a symptom. I think 
definitely these issues of justice and fairness are symptoms of a broader problem within this entire sphere of assessment for, uh, for jobs. Um, I don't know about the future of personality and I can't speak for the industry as a whole, but I think there's going to be a lot more conversations about this justice piece and how assessment is done in organizations and whether that is actually just and fair and equitable. Um, I would love to work with people who have legit concerns about fairness and equity in personality assessment and find out why IO psychologists are being considered the enemy when most IO psychologists you speak to would certainly agree that you know justice is a major concern. A lot of personality assessments are designed um, with particular attention to psychometric values like this, uh, differential item function to make sure that certain items aren't assessing certain people differently, but it's not perfect, right? There's a lot of gray area and there's a lot of white space that haven't been traveled yet. And I think we need to get into that. And I'm hopeful that more and more research is gonna go come out from that and more conversations like this uh, are going to happen so that we can move forward productively. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I like both of your answers. Uh, I'm just going, going to tell you what I like about both of your answers and then move on. Um, so I think what's happening, Mukund, with the, um, with the, you know, the IO community being blamed or looking like that they're being blamed is this um, human behavior that you know, when you create a powerful tool and other people pick it up and abuse it, they, some people tend to uh, blame the person who came up with it or who created it. You should, have, you should never have made it, created it because look, these other people are abusing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's what's happening. Uh, I don't think the, um, you know, the right way that the IO community should uh, answer to these, you know, sort of like attacks is to really recognize them for what they are. It's coming from um, people who don't really understand the, the validity and usefulness of these tools. They just see the examples of it being abused. So that I think is very important uh, for um, this community because, you know, like I said, I recognize that uh, crisis of identity. And I think if that sort of like attitude is shown, it's going to prevail. Um, and the uh, community and the personality typing will get to a point that it would be used uh, fairly and reasonably and it's going to help our society. I also really like what Javad said, um, you know, like religion that helps so many people uh, personality type could also help so many people, but unfortunately, we have gotten to a point that the word God has so many baggages that uh, some people don't even want to deal with it. So I think um, it can get to that point, but the people like Javad said, the people who uh, go beyond those baggages that comes from the abusement of these two um, can use it the best possible way, like the way people are using, some people are using religion to empower themselves and have a fuller life. So I think that's, you know, the, these are the possibility that uh, the future of personality typing uh, we can witness. But I do believe uh, investing in this area, uh, as far as research, I don't know, creating app, just personal development, it's very useful and I have been doing that. I mean, Javad and I have, you know, very, you know, frequent conversation about personality typing. We just like bounce idea off of each other. We type each other, we talk about it all the time. So I think um, it's, it's a good investment that we are all making. Um, if you guys don't have any other points, I, let me just thank you for sharing your time and uh, you know, doing this conversation, I definitely enjoyed it. And uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from both of you. Me too, me too. I think this was an awesome conversation. Thank I you. definitely expanded my, my perspectives. Uh, I, I want to do this again, maybe in person, uh, with a few drinks or something. <laughs> of course, of course. Next, meeting, 
going to Tampa to... Let's do it. Y'all need to come over.